Legend says that Amado Carrillo Fuentes left his small town at the age of 12 with a promise to return rich. He built a multi-billion dollar empire and became Mexico's most powerful drug trafficker of the 1990s. Carrillo, founder of the Juarez Cartel, was nicknamed the Lord of the Skies for using private planes to smuggle cocaine. He bribed Mexican officials to avoid capture and used violence to gain territory. As his network expanded globally, his name and operations began to blip frequently on the DEA's radar. When the US government began pressuring Mexico for his capture, he decided to change his physical appearance through plastic surgery, which he did not come out of alive. After his death, authorities realized that Amado Carrillo Fuentes amassed more money than anyone else in the world. He had hidden properties, gold bullion, and cash that the authorities didn't know. The Lord of the Skies was not just a kingpin, he was the wealthiest man alive. But how did he achieve such an empire? What secrets did he carry to his grave? In this episode of Illicit Investigations, we unearth the saga of Amado Carrillo Fuentes, the Lord of the Skies. We'll detail how he established the most affluent drug empire in history with an advanced fleet of aircraft and disclose a compilation of his private mansions and the discoveries made by the authorities. The lingering question, could this kingpin still be alive as some speculate? Amado Carrillo Fuentes was born on December 17, 1956 in Guamuchilito, a small town in Sinaloa, Mexico. He grew up surrounded by agriculture and drug trafficking. While his father was a modest farmer, his uncle, Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo, was a marijuana trafficker who would later co-found the Guadalajara Cartel with Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo and Rafael Caro Quintero. At the age of 12, Amado left his hometown in pursuit of wealth. With only a sixth grade education, he traveled to Chihuahua and was tutored in the complexities of drug trafficking by his uncle known as Don Neto. Don Neto sent him to the border town of Oyinaga, which faces Presidio, Texas across the border. In the 1970s, this area was a crucial juncture for marijuana trafficking. The local plaza boss, Pablo Acosta Villarreal, also known as El Zorro de Ojinaga, became Carrillo Fuentes' mentor. They collaborated closely for over a decade. When Felix Gallardo and Don Nato began conducting business with Pablo Escobar, the initial drug shipments were directed to Chihuahua, where El Zorro de Oshinaga and Carrillo Fuentes received them, facilitating their transport to the United States. These operations marked the beginning of cocaine trafficking in Mexico, overseen by the Guadalajara cartel. Namado Carrillo Fuentes developed a close friendship with Guillermo Gonzalez Calderoni, a Mexican federal police commander who safeguarded his drug shipments from their arrival from Colombia to their crossing into Texas. His uncle had introduced him to Calderoni before being arrested in 1985 for the kidnapping and murder of DEA agent Kiki Camarena by the Guadalajara cartel in Ciudad Juarez. Carrillo Fuentes started to build his criminal empire facing opposition from the Zorro de Ojinaga. In April 1987, he paid Calderoni a million dollars to eliminate Acosta Villarreal, taking down the resistance once and for all. That year, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo allocated territories among his Guadalajara cartel lieutenants, assigning Ciudad Juarez to Carrillo Fuentes. This marked the official beginning of the Juarez cartel. Ambitious and strategic, Carrillo Fuentes formed a significant alliance with Pablo Escobar during trips to Colombia with Felix Gallardo. Following the arrest of the boss of bosses in 1989, Carrillo Fuentes became Escobar's main ally, elevating the Juarez cartel to unparalleled power in Mexico. He reinvested his earnings in purchasing and retrofitting used jets for drug transportation, amassing a fleet of over 30 twin-turbine 68-seat Boeing and Caravelle aircraft, which transported up to six tons of drugs from Colombia to northern Mexico twice a week. The Juarez cartel became a financial juggernaut. In the early 1990s, it was responsible for 60% of the cocaine entering the U.S., earning Carrillo Fuentes the nickname the Lord of the Skies. 
With no rivals after Pablo Escobar's death in 1993, he expanded his operations by partnering with the Cali cartel, led by the Rodriguez Orejuela brothers. The DEA estimated that the cartel's aviation fleet generated $300 million weekly, with its influence reaching far and wide. One of Carrillo Fuentes' key operatives was General Jose de Jesus Gutierrez Rebolo, who led the drug enforcement efforts under President Ernesto Zedillo. Carrillo Fuentes also ventured into business in Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay, investing in real estate and the synthetic drug market. Despite his immense power, he kept a low profile, avoiding public appearances and using aliases like Jorge Torres or Jorge Venegas for travel. His personal life was marked by relationships with multiple women, resulting in approximately 30 children from different partners, as confirmed by those close to him. The U.S. authorities offered a $5 million reward for his capture. Feeling cornered, Carrillo Fuentes traveled to Russia and Cuba, acquiring properties to organize his retirement from drug trafficking, evading the radar of both the U.S. and Mexican governments. In July 1997, he went to Mexico City for plastic surgery to alter his appearance and for liposuction, but died in the recovery room. Amid public skepticism regarding the death of Mexico's most wanted man, the Mexican Federal Police and the DEA confirmed his demise. Although his body was displayed to the media, many suspected it was a look-alike not the real Lord of the Skies. Today, an urban myth persists that he resides in Cuba, relishing his wealth and a tranquil life. The year he passed away, Forbes magazine, citing DEA information, listed him among the world's wealthiest individuals with a fortune of $25 billion. Despite his reserved nature, Carrillo Fuentes was known for his love of luxury. In Mexico City, he owned a mansion in the prestigious Jardines del Pedregal area, in Hermosillo, his mansion, dubbed 1001 Nights, featured Arab architecture. He also had another mansion in Guadalajara, known as Casa Versace, styled in Italian fashion with designs and decorations by the late Gianni Versace. A DEA source, who pursued Carrillo Fuentes for years, revealed that after his disappearance in 1997, Mexican and U.S. authorities discovered thousands of gold bars, diamonds, and hundreds of millions of dollars in cash hidden across several properties in Ciudad Juarez, El Paso, Texas, Hermosillo, Sonora, Guadalajara, Jalisco, and Mexico City. When calculating his assets, including a fleet of jets, investigators estimated the Lord of the Sky's wealth at approximately 42 billion. This amount surpassed that of the world's then richest man, the Sultan Hassan al Bolkia, with $38 billion and Bill Gates at $36 billion. Some speculate that the Lord of the Skies surrendered a significant portion of his fortune to the authorities in exchange for permission to retire and start a new life anonymously. After Amado's death, his brothers Vicente, known as El Viceroy, and Rodolfo, known as El Niño de Oro, assumed control of the Juarez Cartel. The organization formed an alliance with the Sinaloa Cartel, led by Ismael El Mayo Zambada, who was a close friend of the Lord of the Skies. Juan José Esparragosa Moreno, known as El Azul, along with the Beltran Leva brothers, maintained strong ties with El Viceroy and capitalized on Ciudad Juarez a pivotal crossing point for drug trafficking into the United States. This collaboration was dubbed the Golden Triangle Alliance, operating within Sinaloa, Chihuahua, and Durango. Following Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's escape from Puente Grande prison in Jalisco in 2001, he leveraged this alliance to commence operations in Ciudad Juarez. But in 2004, the Carrillo Fuentes brothers violated the alliance's agreements by imposing taxes on drug shipments passing through Ciudad Juarez. In response, El Chapo orchestrated the hit of El Niño de Oro in Culiacán, Sinaloa. As retaliation, the Carrillo Fuentes family arranged for the murder of Arturo El Pollo Guzman, Chapo's brother, who was incarcerated in La Palma prison in the state of Mexico. This triggered a conflict over control of Ciudad Juarez, 
the Carrillo Fuentes family established a gang called La Linea, composed of active and former police officers to dominate the city. This group allied with El Barrio Azteca, which had of U.S. gang members facilitating drug trafficking across the El Paso border. On the other hand, the Sinaloa cartel supported the Mexico's gang, which included Mexican and U.S. criminals managing some prisons on both sides of the border. Ciudad Juarez turned into a war zone. The Sinaloa cartel, the Juarez cartel, and the Gulf cartel all vied for control over the city. In the first quarter of 2008 alone, the city witnessed 200 homicides, prompting President Felipe Calderon to deploy thousands of soldiers in an effort to restore peace. During these tumultuous years, several relatives of the Lord of the Skies were captured or killed. The final chapter for the Carrillo Fuentes family within the Juarez cartel concluded with the arrest of El Viceroy in October 2014 in Torreón, Coahuila. This is Illicit Investigations. Subscribe now to our channel to go beyond the headlines.